keeps jumping into the sink. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Bunny. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus starring the incomparable Bunny Williams? Are you <coughs> ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you <coughs> revved up? Do you have your motor running to get out on the highway, Bunny? Are you ready? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Then without any further ado, it is time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. Yeah, I got to get a spear gun. Yeah, you got to... There's a lot of lizard people out there, and you got to be prepared, you know? Yeah. Got to be prepared. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe of moving to Afghanistan. Like so many Republicans right now. Yeah. Because they're yeah. the ones who are doing it right. It's, they yeah, know it says about so, freedom. And by freedom is stopping anybody from doing anything they want. That's freedom. It really says a lot about Republicans that a lot of them right now are cheering on the Taliban. Yes. The fuck is wrong with America right now? <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely insane. Yeah. And it's it's amazing how 20 years our military has been there and apparently managed, managed to accomplish absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah. There was absolutely no point in being there. No. And then just the, and then just the double-sided aspect of Trump coming out and saying, I'm pulling our troops from Afghanistan. And, oh, yes, what a great leader Trump is. Saving our troops. He cares about our troops. Trump getting people out of Afghanistan. This is the best news. Trump really should get the Nobel Peace Prize. And then he doesn't do it. And then Biden says, I'm getting our people out of Afghanistan and the same people who applauded Trump are now attacking Biden for doing what Trump said he would do. Yeah. You know? It yeah. just shows that like it's difficult because it seems like half of America doesn't care about America. Republicans' main platform right now just seems to be Staying in power and not any actual governing of the people. Yeah. 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 It's very sad. And also, you can tell that I'm a professional podcaster because I've got a ring light up here and I've got a microphone. And like all professional podcasters, I'm eating saltine crackers. <laughs> <laughs> like any professional podcaster. I, I found a couple of interesting things on YouTube this week, a couple of a couple of shows. Okay. One is called Cinema Therapy. Hmm. Okay. And they cover movies, duh. And it's two okay. guys. One is a filmmaker and the other is a licensed therapist. Nice. So they cover movies from the perspective of what is psychologically wrong with the characters in the movie. They had a fucking field day with Twilight. Nice. Very <laughs> nice. I love that. I love... I, I would love to hear about movies from a therapist's perspective. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's pr it's really kind of fun, and yes, I recommend it. Something nice. else that I found, which I I'm just subscribed to them. What? I just subscribed to them. 
Oh, cool. Huh. Star Trek Continues. Okay. What is that? I don't know if I can necessarily call it good, but watching it is a very strange feeling. They are okay. continuing the original show. And just doing additional stories of the original Star Trek show. And they have all of the sets. They have all of the sound effects. They have all of the props, all of the music. And they try to cast people as much as they could to look like the original characters. Yeah. So, uh. the guy playing Captain Kirk looks totally like a guy who won a Captain Kirk look-alike contest. Nice. Okay. You know? Some of them they did better than others. You know? Yeah. Captain Kirk, they did the best, I think. But then sitting back and just watching it, it's, it's a feeling that's very similar to an Uncanny Valley feeling. I would imagine, yeah. It's not Uncanny Valley because you're watching it and it is the original Star Trek. There's just something off about it. Yeah. Okay. You know? But they yeah. hit all the music cues right and everything. It looks and feels like Star Trek. That's Except awesome. Except none of the people are quite right. Yeah. Now, that also made me wonder something. That as someone with a theater background as yourself, It's clear what they've done in this show, that they've just watched the show a bunch of fucking times, and they're basically doing impersonations of the people in the show. Yeah. Would that be considered acting? Uh, that's an excellent question. That is an excellent question. I don't know if it would be considered acting. It, it would probably be you just doing impressions every week. Yeah, you know? you, you're doing an impression of one specific character. Yeah. Yeah. Every episode. Which is good for the show. I don't want him bringing his interpretation of Captain Kirk. You know, if I'm watching this, I want to I want to see Captain Kirk. Okay, uh, here's my spin on it. There are so many other shows you could do that with. It upsets yeah. me. It upsets me that it's like, oh, let's reboot Twilight Zone for the third time. This time, here's an all new host. He, yeah. And it's in color. And everyone has cell phones. And what? This website is haunting you. And it's uh like, I would love for them to do what you just said about Star Trek with fucking Twilight Zone. Yeah, fuck yeah. some new host. Uh, fuck some new person and some new spin on it. No. It redo it do new episodes of the Twilight Zone in black and white with someone doing a goddamn Rod... Everyone can do a Rod Serling impression. Yeah. You know? And, and, and I believe we're on, on number four. Of Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. We had the original Rod Serling. We had the one on, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Which, eh, like... Like, you really needed to... You need more than just Rod Serling being the host. You need Rod Serling behind it. And guiding it. Because, eh, yeah. the one in the 80s, it, it was okay. It was no, no great shakes. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure, unless this was a fever dream, 
Forrest Whitaker had a Twilight Zone yes. for a while. Yes, I totally forgot about Forrest Whitaker's Twilight Zone, yeah. I think everybody has, including yeah. Forrest. So, yeah, no, I think on... that's what happened. Yeah, Forrest so we're on the fourth. forgot he had yeah. a Twilight show, show and just stopped showing up. Forrest Whitaker was great in the Aretha Franklin biopic, Respect. Just yeah. Just want to take time to say he was amazing in that. Really good. And then the Jordan Peele version. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. So we're on the fourth Twilight Zone. But there's a lot of shows where you could just continue it. Yeah. And I would like to see that done with the Twilight Zone. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. That would be good. So how have you been, sir? I've been fine. This week has all been about trying to get into a schedule because this was the first full week that the kids had of school. Minus Maxwell because Maxwell is doing virtual school while everyone else is going to regular school. So um, Bella's going to school and Eleanor's going to school, but Maxwell is in virtual and they haven't started yet. I think they might starting on Monday, but I'm not sure. So, it's weird because it's like, oh, we've got to get Eleanor to school. Okay, now we need to make sure Bella's up and Bella's in school and Maxwell. Do you want breakfast? Maybe not yet. And he's just like laying in his underwear watching TV on the couch. And it's like, it's so weird. Like, I, I feel like I should be teaching you. Fucking learn! But, no, they just haven't started yet, so... So that's, that's been something. So it's just been getting used to waking up early and, and uh, you know, taking, making sure everyone is fed and has their stuff. And, you know, it, it's so funny because Eleanor is, Eleanor's school experience is the same as all of our other kids' school experience. You know, like, oh, Eleanor, how was your day at school? It was good. Why don't you tell me what happened in school today? Okay, but I'm five. So let me tell you about lunch and recess. Yeah. The only things I remember from my day at school. So, so that's hilarious. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I, let me tell you about her backpack and lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started talking to this boy because he had a Space Jam backpack and we saw Space Jam, so I told him that I saw Space Jam and we talked about Space Jam. Really? What was the boy's name? I don't know, but he has a Space Jam backpack. <laughs> it's like, okay. That, that, that's You're that's fine. fine. That, okay. Okay, then. So that's just been, you know, getting used to waking up super crazy early and uh, it's been... It, it's interesting because when you say school to a very young child, they all have their different take on it. Uh, Emerald didn't want to be left alone at school, and uh, Bella was uh, super excited to go into school, and Maxwell was a little nervous. Apparently, Eleanor's thing is, Eleanor is 100% convinced that... I didn't wake her up on. I didn't wake them up on time, and they're going to be late for school. Okay. Apparently, El, that's Eleanor's biggest fear. Is just, is just. Dad, wake me up tomorrow for school. Make sure you wake me up on time. I don't want to be late. And it's like you've never been late. You're fine, but it's that's that's Eleanor's fear, and I think yeah. that that's interesting. Yeah, and it's like I've never I've never done this. But they're convinced that I... Yeah. So what else happened this week? Uh, <coughs> I, I came out to my parents... Yeah? ...as being gender fluid and pansexual. And, and I, I was texting pictures of the kids to my parents. Oh, how's Bella doing? Oh, well, here's a picture of Bella. Oh, Bella's getting so much older and they're in... 
high school, that's amazing. Do you have any pictures of Emerald? No. And, and then I decided to just like, you know what? Fuck it. Here's a picture of me in a dress. Yeah, okay. Like, and it's like, I, I should... I should let you guys know that I'm gender fluid, and so sometimes I'm a woman. Most of the time I'm a man. Sometimes I'm male-leaning. Sometimes I'm uh, female-leaning. Sometimes I'm more masculine. Sometimes I'm more feminine. Most of the time I'm a guy. Sometimes I'm a woman in a dress, and that's fine. The kids like it. My wife likes it. It's not a big deal, and my, par my parents, I say my parents. I'm pretty sure it was just my mom. But yeah. it, that's beside the point. My parents said, uh, boy, just do what makes you happy. Just be happy. And so it, it, that was a positive. I, I'm also in talks with a m m marijuana company. Yes. But that's it. There's nothing concrete yet, but... <coughs> Uh, I, I might be part of an advertising campaign for a local marijuana dispensary. We're not entirely sure, but I did a video this weekend, which I think was hilarious. Yes, it was. Love my new video with the milkshakes. Uh, I think it's a worthy successor to my last video. And hopefully they like it. Hopefully I should be hearing back from them sometime this week. And... Uh, something's going to happen. I don't know what. It could be nothing, or it could be something big. We'll see. Probably somewhere in the middle. But, but yeah, I'm in talks with a medicinal marijuana company to do some advertising for them, or be a part of an advertising campaign, or perhaps a social media campaign. I don't know. But they want to use my videos, and that's very exciting. Cool. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. In my my in both of those things happened on the same day, and my wife came up to me and hugged me and said, "I'm so proud of you." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm I'm proud of me too." I was really scared to make that phone call, and then I went, "Wait, what are you proud of me for?" It's like, "Oh, for coming out to your parents." And I'm like, "Oh shit, I did that. Yes, I forgot <laughs> I did that because of the whole weed company wanting to work with me thing." But yeah, I'm proud of both things, I guess. Cool. So, yeah, uh, it's been a weird week. How are you, Bunny? Now, now, something had gotten mentioned a couple of weeks back, and I forgot to mention it on the last week's podcast. What's okay. this about buying a church, dude? Oh, yeah, for a while we were considering... It, there was a church that uh, that has stopped being a church and it's now like a residential home and it was for sale and uh, my wife and I it was like 3 a.m. and we had these talks about possibly setting up a GoFundMe and purchasing the church and making it the official church of Ed Wood and getting like a projector and showing movies in there but uh, we will not be doing that because there's no parking there's no. no there's no parking at all where the fuck are we supposed to park on the street? The streets are super fucking small. I don't know where we're going to put our freaking nine cars. And then the corner is the bus stop where the, where the bus comes to pick up the kids. Like, it's a bitch. Uh, the only thing that we can figure out is that it was built in, like, the 19, what, the 1940s? Uh, and back then, there were probably no houses near the church. But now... There's houses all over the church, so there's no place to park at all, period. So, like, there's no room for our cars, let alone all of the people who might be coming to see the Church of Ed Wood, so it's all fucked. But my wife and I but have been doing some home shopping. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a church, though, does it? No. No, no it just has to be a church. And yeah. It was really cool. It had a lot of space. The windows were awesome. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there was some stained glass and some old timey church looking doors, big fat yeah. wooden doors. Pretty and cool. But like practicality, it's not gonna work for us yeah. even if we wanted it to. Yeah. And it's way over a price point anyway. We Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. For a while we were considering uh, I 
I, I, I completely there. understand, and I did not think that this would be a real thing, but I, I still find myself kind of disappointed. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I know that feeling. Yeah, no. Um, same. I, I was I was totally excited, and then I was driving by it, and my my very practical brain was like, "Dude, where are you where are we gonna park? There's yeah. no parking. There's there's not enough uh, yard space for the kids' trampoline or the gazebo or the dog or you know like just it it's not practical for us as a family. Sure, if we wanted to make it just a church, but we'd also have it as a residence, so it wouldn't work." But then where would the congregants park? There's no fucking parking. None. It, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. The whole thing is just ridiculous. So that that sucks. But if you if you could find an old film studio, I think that would be ideal. Yeah. Well, we could also consider getting you know the historic. Um... There's a historic movie theater that used to be downtown, and it got shut down uh, during the pandemic. pandemic. And now the movie theater, the old-timey movie theater, is for sale. And there was a period in time when we were excited about, hey, maybe we could purchase the movie theater. But then we looked into it, and they've rezoned it. So you're not allowed to watch movies in it anymore. What the fuck? I don't know if it's rezoned or what. But yeah, you're not allowed to do it can't, it If you purchase it, great. It would be a great place for weddings or maybe a church, but... You can't, it can't be a movie theater. So, like, what the fuck? I think, but here's the thing is, I think it is a matter of you cannot function as a movie theater. Yeah. And you, pay, and make, have people pay for the movie. Okay, but you're not functioning it, using it as a movie theater. You're using it as a church. That's what I yeah, still that's, see. And yeah, you that's, should be able to play whatever fucking movies you want. Yeah. In your church. As long as we're not charging for it. As long as we're not charging for it, yeah. But again, so. it comes down to if, you know, because we, we can't just buy a church. We have to have a place to live as well. Where are we going to park? There's literally no space for, like, a yard, a garden, a dog, a gazebo, a, you know, trampoline. So it wouldn't work. It'd be fantastic if we could buy it on its own just for a church. But... We are not in a financial situation to do that. Well, but, you know, let's... Maybe this would be a good place for us to get a little viewer feedback. What would, would, would viewers give to a GoFundMe? What, 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 does, do viewers want to see this happen? Do viewers have a cheap place? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. know down in the comments somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. We've got a lot of places for you to comment. How are you, Bunny? Um, that's pretty much it for me. Yeah. So, so what's on the shap? It's. it's what's a on the shap? What's on the shap? It's a bit of a big one. It's the it's the continuation of our shapology of interconnected shaps. We yes. talked about Norman Fell, then we talked about the rise and fall of Fred Silverman, and now we're getting to the thing that he's most known for uh, that has to do with a former Minnesota governor. Okay. Not governor. Uh, senator. Senator? Yeah. Okay. Well... Maybe we should get on over there then. I agree. So this has been another thrilling episode of Bunny Versus. And until next week, self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. I love that. And cut on that.